here beside us in Croke Park, the groundskeepers are actually still working busily away trying to get the pitch back in action and back ready for the women's final tomorrow when the dubs are back in action again. But you, of course, are still celebrating what happened today. Eight-timer, Stephen Cluxton, <laughs> uh, captain. First time for you as manager, though. But yes. I have to say, in your interview after the match, you looked a relieved man. Is that, was there a wash of relief over you? Yeah, relief was definitely one emotion. Um, but just a thrill for the players. It's been a long year and um, a challenging year in many ways, but delighted all the hard work and dedication came to fruition tonight. Well, I, I did work out that it's just over a year, actually, since you were technically officially appointed as Dublin manager and so much has happened and you've had to deal with so much in the meantime. Yeah, well, one of the reporters afterwards actually said, I think it was this day last year. This so, day uh, plus a week. Yeah, well, plus a week, is it? So, um, yeah, we little did we think at that stage that we were going to face the type of year that we had done, but um, look, at we're here anyway and um, it's, uh, it's great to to get to this point it's great that the competition was played in the yeah. first instance obviously that was a massive challenge in its own right but um, uh, it was great to be here on the final day and, and to get over the line it's fantastic of course it was and Stephen eight times and you know earlier on today we were looking at this man and his teammates back in 1995 because obviously it's their jubilee year and you remember the hurt that all those players went in and to build up to that and of course you had so much hurt as well can, can you remember what it was like when you were lining out for Dublin time and time again and you're actually struggling to even get to a final yeah I suppose that's the stuff that stays with you you know um, the memories they're good and they're bad you know they, they drive you on um, and you're just trying to warn the, the, the future crop that it, it's, it can be as easy as that, you know, it can turn around very quickly. So just to grasp everything they can while they have the chance and opportunity, you know. We had Declan Hannan on with us last week yeah. and he was talking about the cooking competition that they did over lockdown. But, but you see what you guys came out with ready for National League action again. So what did you do to try to keep this bond? Because every time I think James McCarthy in particular speaks after an All-Ireland final, he talks about the bond and the family aspect to the to the team. So how did you keep that going during that time? Yeah, look, it, it wasn't easy. I think, to be fair, we were probably doing the same thing as every other team. You know, there was a lot of Zoom calls and uh, a lot of creative ideas that some worked and some definitely didn't. OK, you know? what, what worked and what didn't work? Well, well, I think we had a cooking competition as well. and. Uh, I think you won that, didn't you? No. <laughs> Hardly. I can't <laughs> cook toast. <laughs> you might still be yeah. ahead of the rest of the... Yeah. Anything else? Um, uh, we had quizzes and we had uh, karaoke nights and we had all sorts of stuff going on, yeah. But it was... Um, look, at it, it, was just, it was just a matter of trying to keep the show on the road and... Uh, and um, keep everyone connected in some way. Look, it's been a very challenging year, and and you know we, we spoke this about about this earlier in the week about uh, you know the year that it has been, and for the families of players who couldn't be with us tonight on this special occasion, you know, and we've dedicated that victory tonight to them because it's their love and support and nurturing that has, has got the players to this stage, and we're just disappointed they couldn't be here, and also for the families of those who've lost loved ones this year as well like we remember them on this this night and um, um we're, we're hoping that there's better days lie ahead for everybody absolutely really well said and i know that you mentioned that in your speech as well uh, stephen and i also noticed that after the final whistle you all went down to the hill was that a nod towards the dublin supporters who ordinarily would be here you look confused i'm guessing it's not i was in the dressing room sorry <laughs> <laughs> I, Did you, do you really? Is that true? Do you really just go straight to the de dressing rooms afterwards? Um, look, to be honest, um, we've spoke, spoken about the hurt of the years that I didn't win, and and um, I, I find it. I, I wouldn't like to be on the receiving end of people jeering and shouting in my face. So I just think it's just a nice gesture, just to, to quietly go in and, and celebrate out of the harm's way. You know, I, I know the guys in the Mayo jerseys put so much time and effort into that and the hurt that they're feeling, I know what it feels like. Um, it's just an appreciation for the, the contest, you know. That's, that's probably what I, you know, I'm absolutely delighted, of course. Um, no one more delighted, but uh, it mightn't show. Yeah. But uh, absolutely delighted for everybody, you know, really am. Don't apologise for being yourself ever, Stephen Cluxton. Um, one thing on the game, actually, in the first half, Mayo did appear to be on top in the kickouts. What was it like from your perspective when you were looking out and go? Yeah, they put a ferocious press on us, you know, um, and we were expecting that, you know. They they just come up full full 100%. They give it everything. Um, we kind of just maybe had to tweak it a little bit at half time, um, and it, and it kind of paid off then, you know, but full credit to Mayo. They really had us on the back foot on our kickouts um, in the first half. So, 
we, you know, it's very hard to sustain that for 70, 70 plus minutes. So we knew that we'd get opportunities um, and then try and, and, and try and get something off them, you know. Since you came in as manager, you took over obviously from a legend who achieved ridiculous things. What was it that has struck you most about this group of players that perhaps you hadn't envisaged before? These players, they're, they're just so loyal to the notion of trying to get better, continuous improvement and evolve and grow as a group and um, and we set our stall out at the start of the year that that's what we needed to do. We couldn't stagnate, we had to drive on and, uh, and they applied themselves amazingly in that way. Just before we go, we are going to go very quickly. The annual, you're not planning to go anywhere, I presume. Pardon? The annual, you're not planning to go anywhere, I presume. <laughs> God knows. We'll see. I'll have to have the talk with the boss. We'll see where we go from there. The annual question and the annual answer as well, <laughs> of course.